What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Homestead. I'm Jeff and we are here at our current project, a basement development in a set of townhouses. And we've just wrapped up framing and we're kind of at a blank state, ready to get our sub trades in to finish up electrical, plumbing, etc. And we're going to focus on some other aspects, specifically designing a basement bar for this nook here behind me. So we have a lot of clients who are at this stage in their kind of build process and need to get a design done. So I figured what a perfect video to bring you guys along for a ride. And the first step we're gonna start with is getting all of our measurements. So when you're taking your measurements, make sure to take into account the thickness of your drywall. So for example, I have 112 inches from stud to stud in width here, but I know I'm going to have half an inch of drywall on each side and that needs to be accounted for in the final design. All right, we've got all our measurements. Time to jump on the computer and start designing. Alrighty, welcome back to the office. Time to get those measurements we just took into our design program and start laying out this basement bar. Okay, our measurements are in the program, and now it's time to turn our attention to the design itself. So where do we start? Well, I personally like to start with what I have to include in that particular design, whether it's a kitchen, a bathroom, a closet, or in this case, a basement bar. And what I have to include in this particular project is some sort of tall cabinet for storage, like a pantry, and I also need to include a mini fridge. So we're gonna start with those, and then we're gonna plan the rest of the design around those two particular pieces. Seeing as how this is a small bar area, there really isn't a lot left in order to fill out the space. So one thing I do know is I want to include at least two standard full door cabinets and one set of drawers. You will also notice that the outer cabinets on each side are being placed a few inches off the wall. So I do this for a couple reasons. First, if you're using standard doors, this allows the door to completely open and access that cabinet. This is even more important with pantries that have interior drawers that can be pulled out. Now in this case, I'm also doing it on the right hand side with a little set of drawers because I want to give a balanced look between the right and the left. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that as kind of the basics of this bar. And that's a few lower cabinets, a couple drawers in there, and then we have our must-haves, which is that mini fridge and that tall pantry or storage cabinet. But what I'm noticing is it's really kind of heavy on that left hand side where that big cabinet is and I need something to balance it out. And that's really where design comes down to is just whether it's balanced visually for a space like this where you see it all as one or balanced functionally in a big kitchen for example. So we're going to tinker around, we're going to play around with a few ideas on the right hand side and help give this a much more balanced look. Alrighty, so personally I'm not a fan of standalone wall cabinets like I would have to use in this space next to the window on the right. My first thought is to go with open shelving. I can use it in a nice wood tone, this will give a little bit of contrast to the actual cabinetry itself. Still give that balanced look from right to left, but not look nearly as heavy as a full wall cabinet in that place. One thing to keep in mind when you're using open shelving in any design, whether it's a kitchen or a bar like this, is spacing. Think about what you're going to use these shelves for, what is going to be placed on them, and space them accordingly. I am also going to take a minute and change my countertop out to more of a cement tone and texture. This is where 3D rendering really has its perks, allowing you to visualize a space without having to just look at a bunch of individual samples. Okay, I really like that. Those, those open shelves give it a much more visually balanced look from right to left. The last aspect we're going to turn our attention to is that kind of ugly ductwork that sits above the window. We're going to hide that in a bulkhead and really kind of give this wall a finished look. Before I determine exactly what finish I'm going to use for this bulkhead, I want to play around with some sizing to see how it impacts the overall design. I'm going to start by creating a bulkhead the size of my base cabinets. So that would be 24 inches deep. Thank you. 
Now, I can immediately tell it's not the right proportion and it looks too big, and that part that sticks off on the right hand side past that little wall just looks off-putting. So we're gonna reduce the bulkhead size down to the same depth of the floating shelves, which is 12 inches. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I like this a lot better, but now that little area above the tall pantry where it's not quite as deep as the bulkhead, but the bulkhead looks recessed from the front of pantry, that needs to be improved. So I'm gonna build some sort of open shelving there to fill in that gap. All right, so I'm really happy with how this is starting to come together. I think we're starting to get pretty close to the final design and now it's just tinkering with a few details. So the first is gonna be the actual finish of that bulkhead itself. I think I'm gonna go with the wood tone to match the floating shelves and that puts both aspects of this basement bar in kind of an L-shaped pattern. The black with the pantry and the wood with the bulkhead across the top. Now another thing I need to do is play with the heights of those floating shelves. You can see now that the bulkhead is in place, those shelves are way too high and need to be dropped down a little bit. I'm also gonna play around a little bit with the color above the countertop or what would be kind of the backsplash area. Now I have a few ideas here and a few designs in mind that I am going to incorporate into the final build and I don't really wanna dive into in this design video so you're gonna to have to stay tuned to see those. And that is it. That is the basics of designing a basement bar. So just to give a quick recap, I start with my primary important items that have to be in the space. So in this case, a mini fridge and that pantry. I then fill in there with kind of the secondary notes of cabinets and drawers, depending on how you want them arranged and what will fit depending on the size of your space. From there, it's all about giving it a balanced visual look that still remains functional for the final design. So the cool thing about this basement bar design is we're going to be installing it in the upcoming episodes. So make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Now, hopefully this has given you a bit of an idea how I go from kind of blank studs to a first design. And then in the upcoming videos, you'll see how we'll take this design and turn it into a real finished, beautiful looking basement bar. We do have a few extra elements we're going to include in this space that we haven't talked about yet. So another reason to stay tuned. Thanks a ton for watching guys. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one.